Amazon stock drops 13% after missing earnings expectations. Apple recalls plugs that may cause electric shocks. Facebook opens live streaming to the iOS masses and more. It's Thursday, January 28th, and this is Crunch Report. Hello everyone, earnings week rolls on. This is actually a big day. Amazon, Microsoft, Electronic Arts, Alibaba, and Samsung all reporting their latest quarters today. But we're gonna focus on Amazon because the company just had its best quarterly profit in its entire history, but still watched its stock fall 13% after hours after missing analysts' expectations on net sales and earnings per share. Now, Amazon reported net sales of $35.7 billion for the fourth quarter of 2015, which is up 22% from $29.3 billion in the previous year. Amazon Web Services grew a hefty 69% year over year to $2.4 billion. Amazon's Q4 is specifically important because it encompasses the holiday season, where Amazon pulls in a big retail revenue, which still accounts for 90% of Amazon's overall business. Now on that note, the company reported that after Thanksgiving weekend, sales of its own devices like the Amazon Echo, the Fire Tablet, and the Fire TV were three times higher than the previous year. Sounds good, right? Amazon Prime memberships also increased 51%. Sounds like Amazon would have gotten away with a win here if it weren't for those meddling analysts. Did you get that? Probably to you. Do you like electric shocks? No, of course you don't. You're not a monster. And that's why Apple is voluntarily recalling its AC wall plug adapters made for certain regions because of what the company calls a very rare risk of the two-prong adapters breaking and then giving you an electric shock. The region affected are Argentina, Australia, Brazil, continental Europe, New Zealand, and South Korea, and affect wall plug adapters shipped with Macs and certain iOS devices between 2003 and 2015, and were also included in the Apple World Traveler Adapter Kit. Now, Apple says it's aware of just 12 incidents all across the world. That's very few. But you also don't want to be the unlucky person that gets shocked either. If you're unsure whether or not you have a shocky plug, Apple says the affected two-prong plugs either have four or five characters or no characters on the inside slot where they attach the main Apple power adapter. Apple has also set up a more helpful website as well, which we've linked to in our article. Okay, so guys, live streaming, it's a thing that is here. Live streaming, everybody's doing it, where are they? Twitter's approach is through its standalone app, Periscope, with replays that can be watched for 24 hours, then they can't be watched anymore. And then there's Facebook Live, which lets users live stream right into their followers' newsfeed with replays that never expire. Today, Facebook is opening its live feature to all iPhone users in the US. It used to be just for celebrities and journalists, and then they opened up to verified accounts more recently, and now it's everybody as long as you're on iOS and in the US. Now, next time you share a status update, you'll see the live button beside the one for photos or stickers or locations. Facebook also says an Android version is on the way. So now, assuming we're setting aside Meerkat altogether because nobody's really talking about Meerkat anymore, we have two kind of distinct models. We've got the Periscope model, which is ephemeral and might help people broadcast without so much pressure. And then we have Facebook's model, which already has a larger audience and permanent replays, which mean viewers can catch up whenever they want. Notifications also work differently on each platform. And of course, Twitter and Facebook feeds work differently too. I have to say, I have, I have yet to find a lot of live streams in general that have been really compelling for me to watch. And going forward, that's going to be the real test anyway. Okay, so both Bank of America and Wells Fargo are incorporating Apple Pay into their ATMs. This is according to a source familiar with both companies' plans, who says engineers at both companies have been placed on assignments, planning multiple months to build the Apple Pay features. Wells Fargo's head of ATMs, Jonathan Villeen, implied that Apple Pay was coming in a confirmation that stated, we've been working on the technology that allows us to hook to digital wallets, leveraging NFC on mobile phones to replace the card at the transaction at the ATM. Right now, the wallet that we support is Android Pay. Right now. He went on to say that Wells Fargo would likely add more mobile wallets throughout the year. A rep from Bank of America also confirmed the company is currently developing a new cardless ATM solution that supports NFC. So again, that implies Apple Pay might be on the horizon. Now, a competitor to both companies, Chase Bank, recently announced that it would be rolling out cardless ATMs this year as well. Now, all three would allow customers to withdraw money without needing their debit card or credit card. I can also save the bank's money by protecting against fraud, since it's easier to forge a credit card than an entire iPhone with a fingerprint scanner built in. 
SpaceX has had to pass a variety of certification tests required under the Commercial Crew Program in order to move ahead with its private space flight plans. Today, NASA released footage from what's called the Drop Test, which SpaceX performed in Coolidge, Arizona, and involves four large parachutes that are part of SpaceX's Crew Dragon landing system. So for the Drop Test, the parachutes were carried uh, thousands of feet above the ground on board a C-130 cargo aircraft. Then a weight was used in place of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, and then the parachutes were rigged to open as if the Crew Dragon astronauts were returning from the International Space Station. That's the whole idea. SpaceX will ultimately use Drogue parachutes in its full landing system design, which will deploy before the four main chutes in order to slow and stabilize the capsule as it descends. This is all very scary to me. SpaceX performed a drop test back in 2013, but has since modified the original Dragon design to create the human-rated Crew Dragon version, which will use drogue parachutes and four main parachutes. NASA stated via a blog post today that later tests will go progressively more realistic to simulate as much of the actual conditions and processes the system will see during an operational mission. NASA hopes to reach the space station via a U.S. company by the end of 2017. And that's the report for today. I'm Sarah Lane. This episode was presented by Go90. Thanks, Go90. Also, our annual Crunchies Awards are happening in just over a week on Monday, February 8th. If you want to buy tickets, you better do it now before it's too late because you only have a few seats left. All the information is at techcrunch.com slash crunchies. As for Crunch Report, we air every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on techcrunch.com. You can also find us on iTunes and on YouTube as well, and we'll see you tomorrow.